we had a video on playing games around sex and releasing old par paradigms around relationships where a woman's not supposed to initiate sex, not supposed to have sex with someone for so many dates or whatever. There's a lot of rules about that mm -hmm. in the rules. Um, someone wrote in and said, after watching the video, said, so what then? She learns how to express her fear of, of connection, afraid she's afraid that the gentleman will leave her if she has sex. Um, after she expresses it, what happens then? Um, it seems like this woman equates having sex with a longer term commitment. Maybe the other person equates it to fun and experience one day at a time and doesn't see it as a commitment. How does she deal with that conversation? This is Reed Mahalko from readaboutsex.com. Kathy Vartilli from intimacydojo.com. And honestly, I'd rather know early if the other person doesn't have the same interest or in, like the same. There's nothing wrong with wanting casual sex and there's nothing wrong with wanting long term commitment. But having that conversation early lets them figure out what they have in common. Yeah, I mean, a, a, in the dating world, the uncommon thing is for people on those first couple of dates to have, like, real conversations about their values and especially around sexuality. So I would model that if I'm going to have a real conversation with you and scare you away on the first date, then I didn't waste a second date on you. Um, if, and again, this is me. If you've watched any of these videos, then you get a little bit more about my orientation on the world. But also, um, as you're building that relatedness, mm -hmm. which seems to happen a lot more these days online, mm -hmm. so you kind of already vetted that they might be a good fit for first and hopefully second date. When you're meeting in person, if if not already on the in the online conversation, you're having conversations about real things. Mm -hmm which include sex and what sex means to you. Not what you are going to say to impress the other person and try to, you know, get them to not run screaming from the restaurant, but like the, a real conversation about like, well, here's, here's how I like to have sex and, and, and have relationships. What about you? Yeah. Um, and one of the things I've noticed is that, I was paying attention because I read the rules and I read a lot of the stuff, the, the, the normal dating stuff mm -hmm. for a long time before I found Reed and sex geeks and people that are self-expressed. And they all went to hell. Yeah, they all went to hell. Um, and one of the things was as I started sharing more, I noticed people, I was watching people's reaction. I'm a PhD, I'm a geeky. And I noticed that sometimes people would pull back when I would share too much of what I wanted, mm -hmm. too much of what I wanted. Um, and I was like, maybe Reed's descriptions are wrong. Like, what's going on? And what I found was, if I was sharing it, can I role model with you? Sure. So if I was on a date, and I was like, I really want to have sex with you. And, like, I was, like, like pulling and, like, needing that person to validate me and not being okay in myself. Mm -hmm. Then that the person was kind of like, whoa, that's a lot. Like, it, it felt too soon or, like, I was being... I interpreted according to the old rules that I was expressing, sharing too much or being too forward. Mm. Whereas if I was present in myself and I was really okay, whatever your reaction was or like whether you wanted to or not, like, yeah, you're pretty hot. I'd like to have sex with you. I get that a lot. <laughs> Come on. That's funny. Uh, I don't get it that much. Please continue. Tell me more. It allowed me to be self-expressed without the shame or the neediness. Sure. It, it allowed me to be self-expressed sooner without needing to follow the rules, which would, would, like, if I was trying to date according to the rules and I wasn't telling someone that I wanted to have sex with them, I was, like, letting them be the pursuer, that would let me hide my neediness mm -hmm. or hide that uh, wanting them to validate me, whereas if I was okay in myself and I shared it, it didn't really matter, like, yeah, if he says no, okay, he's not, you know. And the only thing I would add to that is is if you create the context mm -hmm. on the date or whatever that, hey, you like, role model it? yeah, like, so I would love to um, to have a conversation about sex and what it actually, how it fits into intimacy and relationships with you mm -hmm. and, 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 and talk about, like, casual sex while you're dating sex mm -hmm. and then, like, you, you're having a relationship sex. Wow. Okay, I like that context rather than just like, oh, how's your lasagna? I want to have sex with you. Yeah, which depending on the lasagna is.
for it to look legitimate. So. Yeah. Well, and actually, in the video, it was like, I'm afraid that if we have sex, they will leave. Mm -hmm. So the difficult conversation formula is great. Great, great one to follow. Yeah, and you can yeah. find that at readaboutsex.com forward slash difficult convo. And um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's really about context. Use dating as a means of assessing whether you two can actually have deep conversations. And it doesn't have to be like deep, like, you know, we're going to save the world, but like, so who are you and, and, and what do you know about yourself and what works for you? You know, and let's talk about sex. Like, let's talk about things like finances or pop, like talk. Let's talk about all the taboo stuff a book like the rules tells us not to talk about. Are you up for that? And and then see, because and then if they say no, I'm not up for that. Be like, okay, thank you for taking care of yourself. What would you like to talk about? But I think that's a much better use of your time in really getting to reveal yourselves to each other. Mm -hmm. And then around sex, like have the conversation about the sex. And if you have similar shared values, mm -hmm. at least you have, or, or even inside that context, you're like, well, so just so you know, like around casual sex and how I'm getting to meet you in this date, like I would totally have sex with you like tonight. Yeah. What is, how does that land on you? What does that feel like? And then in that case, it might be like, well, I'm really afraid that if we have sex that you'll think I'm cheap or you'll just leave. Like I've had a lot of people leave afterwards. And so I'm nervous about that. So being vulnerable and sharing. And now we're having a real conversation rather than everyone's like the way I think Chris Rock said it, like on the first date, like you, it's not you, it's, it's your representative yeah. that's on the date. So you, avoiding that. And again, you'll find your own style with this, but creating context and having real conversations, I think it's a much better way to get to know each other. That's me. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing that and asking because it gave us a chance to geek out with you. Leave comments below. We'd love to know what you think about sharing vulnerably on dates.